Greetings of Earth and Heaven on this day, Saul in Virgo, Luna waxing in Aquarius. Let us adore together the Bayun deity, the Father Mother God, who in unity formulates the golden and magical child, the eld archetype and hologram of the human race. Nature is a system of nuptials and gives us the language of spirit by the love of the goddess leading us on to the divine life. The crown of immortality for us is the power of godhood in a kingdom of love, wherein the heart dwells. And here do we adore the Bayun God in its unity and in love. Love is our essence and our nature. It tinctures the pure expression of the will. In honor of this nameless God, with the love of the goddess and by the zeal of our spiritual aspiration, are we able to see the soul unveiled, that we might know each other in the light. In beauty, truth, and love, and by way of the essence of the pure will in each of us, do we in peace and harmony adore this golden and magical child of the Bayoum God. Now that who aspires to knowledge of the heart, know that equilibrium is the basis of the work. We must always endeavor to seek light through the strife of the contending forces. Rejoice, therefore, that through thy trials thou shalt triumph. The Master has said, Blessed art thou. Yet, O aspirant, let thy victories bring thee not to vanity. With the increase of gnosis should come the increase of wisdom. Be sure that thy soul is steadfast. Fear is failure and the forerunner of failure, and courage is the beginning of virtue. Therefore, fear not the spirits, but be firm and courteous with them. We are what we make of ourselves, our actions affecting each ourselves and also the entire universe. Worship and neglect not the physical body, which is a temporary connection to the outer material world. Knowledge of the heart starts by strengthening and controlling the animal passions, and by disciplining both the emotions and their reason. Strive ever to nourish the higher aspirations. Verily in heart do we good unto others for its own sake, and not for any gratuity. Remember that unbalanced force is evil. We must ever act passionately, think rationally, and each must be thyself. Truly also, have the greatest self-respect, and accumulate virtue in all that you do. Virtue is the prelude to holiness. The material act is but the outward expression of our thoughts. We must strive ever to the control of thought and the fixity of our intent. Establish thyself firmly in the equilibrium of forces, in the center of the cross of elements, that rosy cross, from whose center the creative word issued in the birth of the dying universe. Therefore must we be prompt and active as the silks, avoiding frivolity and caprice. We must be energetic and strong like the salamanders, avoiding irritability and ferocity. Also we must be flexible and attentive to images like the undines, avoiding idleness and changeability. And finally, we should be laborious and patient like the gnomes, avoiding grossness and avarice. In true religion, there is no sect. Therefore, take heed that thou blaspheme not the name by which another knows this God. For if thou do this thing in Jupiter, thou wilt blaspheme Jehovah. And in Osiris, Yeshua, ask and ye shall have, seek and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Good afternoon and uh, greetings again from the Gnostic Church of Light. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about Rosicrucianism. Here we are in a Rosicrucian Mass. So, why Rosicrucianism? Well, that, all that is called Rosicrucian really is the essence behind all of the Western uh, 
mystery tradition, all of Western ceremony embraces the metaphysical light, the looks, LVX. That light is the cross, the cross of light. And the rose is the heart or the center of our being, the will. So that rose is affixed to the cross, rosy crucian, the rosy cross. Knowledge of the self is the knowledge of the divine. It is gnosis. The self is symbolized by the circle. So, we here in our congregation, we're dealing with a whole assemblage of selves, of people themselves who are seeking their own meaning and determination in life. And that is the circle on the cross, that's the circle of our being, the center of our will. And circles are always uh, symbols of the soul, of the self, of the whole self, of the God, because th there's no difference between man and God. There is no God but man. There is no man but God. Um, so, we put this rose on that cross of light, and Note that that cross even itself is a much older symbol uh, with the Western mystery tradition being much older than Christianity. Uh, Christianity is just one of you know many things that have come out of the Western mystery tradition. Uh, many religions, thoughts, ideas, philosophies, currents, uh, metaphysics, what have you. Um, the Gnostic cross features a serpent on the cross. And the serpent is the ancient symbol of spirit, much older than, uh, you know, how it's used in the Old Testament. Uh, again, a much older symbol. Um, the serpent always represented uh, spirit, whereas the Jews got that serpent to appear as if evil by putting the serpent in the garden. But it's the serpent that brought knowledge. It's the serpent that brought gnosis. The evil was to deny uh, humanity knowledge, to, to, buy, to deny humanity gnosis. Um, and indeed, uh, with that, the goddess in that garden, it's all about the garden and the goddess who eats that apple, the earth. And she ultimately is made evil, right? She's turned into a serpent, you know, just as she's done in the, uh, the book of Revelation. From the opening of Liber 65, one of our holy books, I am the heart, and the snake is entwined about the invisible core of the mind. So, the phenomenon of light in the sky, whether we observe the sun or the stars, it's easy to see a cross form. You don't really even have to let your eyes go blurry. That cross kind of comes as that light pierces through the air of our atmosphere. Um, and every star, of course, is a sun. Every sun develops its own uh, solar system. And uh, the light of our sun gives you know, life to the earth, to the goddess, Mother Earth. And the light of the stars feeds our imaginations at night. So uh, bringing us that wonder, that awe, that really moves us towards the spirit. Thus we have life and wonder, or will, Thelema, and love. And, of course, as Liber Al teaches, every man and every woman is a star. The cross of light is a teleological force, the divine intent that brings consciousness to everything it touches. The, teleo teleo uh, the teleology, if I can say the word, the teleology is the uh, divine intent, and that divine intent is consciousness. And I'd like to differentiate between consciousness and awareness. You know, even Blavatsky in our... Uh, Ross Crucian Mass here, the quote we use, tells us that everything is uh, conscious to some degree. And really, we should probably see everything is aware. Consciousness comes with language and reflective thought, whereas awareness just is. My dog is aware, but my dog is not conscious. Just as an infant is aware, but an infant is not conscious. An in infant only begins to become conscious slowly as it... Um, 
takes on language and it can develop that reflective consciousness. And that's a process that really should go with us through life into adulthood and even continue there until our last breath. So that's what we're really all about here at the Gnostic Church of Lang, um, that you know, we are conscious of both the, the great, the body, uh, the greater body of the goddess and the lesser body of the goddess. The um, lesser body of the goddess being Mother Earth, and the, the greater body of the goddess being the universe itself. Um, these two are connected, uh, as one really learns it, if you get into the study of the Tetragrammaton, the four-lettered name of the divine. For the goddess, she is the thought of the divine, the universal mind. But again, we should stress this universal mind doesn't think like human beings. It's not there saying, oh, be nice or I'm going to put a neat black mark in your book. Um, the universal mind doesn't know about karma, doesn't know whether you've been bad or good. Um, the universal mind is not concerned with human morality in any way, shape, or form. And we see that from nature herself. You know, the innocent man gets caught up in the natural cataclysm, uh, as along with everyone else. The sun shines on everybody. So that's really what it is. And... Um, yeah, rocks and trees have awareness, dogs have awareness, animals have awareness, um, but the divine is the mystery of consciousness, and that mystery is what you are, or I should say what you're becoming, okay? Uh, even uh, the body of the goddess, uh, even the body, I should say, uh, 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 forgive me, my nose is a little messed up here. The body, or even bodies, compels all to orbiting cycles or circles. Um, you know, this is readily apparent. Not just the circles of the season. We go from spring back to spring again. But the circles of our life. What goes around comes around. Um, there's a circular rose on the cross. Everything is about being. Thus it is that circles and crosses, these symbolize uh, together being. Will and love, will and agape. The circle of the rose is the heart affixed to the cross of light. It brings us beauty in its infinite variety. This beauty is your inner God, the inspiration that guides you to express your genius and to make your heart, to make your mark upon the world. That really is bringing your heart out. The world is the goddess. So that inspiration, inspire means to and bring in spirit, inspire, in spirit. Um, and it's that inspiration that we're looking to find to bring your life to a place that is meaningful and exciting in that meaningfulness. Um, with, you know, uh, I, I used to love the, uh, uh, I, it was the Saturday morning sports programs or Saturday afternoon sports programs, I should say, the, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. And both were given a great virtue because that's really what it is. It takes courage and sports really gives us that model. And we just simply can cross apply it to uh, you know, our own lives personally, even that we are not athletes ourselves. But there are other ways that we will take courage. There are other uh, ways that we will find the, you know, the thrill of victory. And to get there, you will find the agony of defeat. We take both together excitedly, and we want you to find your genius, because that is your value to us, and that is our value to you. And that's what brings us together. Mutual desire, a mutual dream of life. Thank you. Take care and be well.
For Osiris on Narvath, who is found perfect before the gods, hath said, These are the elements of my body, perfected through suffering, glorified through trial. For the scent of the dying rose is as the repressed sigh of my suffering, and the flame red fire is the energy of mine undaunted will. And the cup of wine is the pouring out of the blood of my heart, sacrificed unto regeneration, unto the newer life. The bread is the foundation of my body, which I transform readily, that it may be renewed. For I am Osiris triumphant, even Osiris on Nophris, the justified. I am he who is clothed with the body of flesh, yet in whom is the spirit of the great gods. I am the Lord of life, triumphant over death. He who partaketh with me shall arise with me. I am the manifester and matter of those whose abode is in the invisible. I am purified. I stand upon the universe. I am its reconciler with the eternal gods. I am the perfecter of matter. And without me the universe is not. I am come in the power of the light. I am come in the mercy of the light. I am come in the light of wisdom. The light hath healing in its wings. Blessed be thou, Lord of the universe, for thy glory flows out to the ends of the universe rejoicing. Through thirty ethers I summon the forces of the universe in myself. I inhale the perfume of the rose, for the air is the sweetness of life. I feel the warmth of this sacred lamp, the fire of my very own spirit. I taste this cake of light to nourish the foundation of my renewed body. I drink this wine that the body become infused with spirit. Finally, the ringing of the bell enchants my soul unto the city of the period. Behold the doctrine of the four yods, integrity. The integral man and woman seeks always to do that which is benevolent, yearning to do that which is right. Without prospect of profit, he or she dedicates him or herself to what is good. And without pressure from others, he or she redresses his or her errors. Good deeds are accumulated as it is known that they will be sufficient to create character in us. If bad deeds are not accumulated, they will not be sufficient to disrupt our lives. The petty man or woman thinks that small good deeds are unimportant and does not do them. He or she thinks that small bad deeds are unimportant and does not abstain from them. Thus his or her evil accumulates until it can no longer be disguised, and his or her unconscious guilt grows until it can no longer be suppressed.
the noble man or woman strives to harvest virtue in all its forms. Intent. Intent is not a thought or an object or a wish. Intent is what can make a man or a woman succeed when his or her thoughts say that he or she is defeated. It operates in spite of one's self-indulgence and generates invulnerability and impeccability. He or she then walks the path with heart and waits for an opening to freedom. Sufficient personal power leads to the mastery of intent. Our reality is completely and entirely based upon our intent. It is a sign of considerable advance when a man begins to be moved by the will, by his own energy, self-determined, instead of being moved by desire, by a response to an external attraction or repulsion. Intent creates your reality. What are you intending for yourself? You can recognize it by listening to your real wishes, the ones with emotional buttons on them, the wishes that make you cry or scare you enough to make you cringe or bring a huge smile across your face just thinking about them. They are buried deep inside and they are the force that moves you in this life. Intelligence. All matters alive and in its own way is intelligent. Matter is made manifest by its rate of vibration. The frequency of vibration in matter and its density provide for us a key to the level of consciousness indwelling any being or object. Its rate of vibration shows us the degree of its intelligence. Nothing is dead or inanimate in nature. Everything exists in some degree of animation. Everything is alive and in its own way is an expression of universal mind. Only this all-pervading consciousness and intelligence is expressed in a different way in all the diverse beings made manifest. The degree of consciousness in any one thing corresponds to the degree of its density or the speed of its vibrations. The more dense the matter, the less conscious it is and the less intelligent. In our bodies, we must strive to raise the rate of vibration of our flesh, as we know that flesh contributes to the quality of thought in our brain. Also, the greater the rate vibration of any particular being, the more conscious and the more intelligent the matter. Hence, intelligence is related to adaptation. The more intelligent an individual, the better able he or she is to adapt to the circumstances of life. He or she then learns to accept the world as it is and is not confounded by finding it not to be what he or she might want it to be. Intuition. Every one of us possesses the faculty, the interior sense that is known by the name of intuition. But how rare are those who know how to develop it? It is, however, only by the aid of this faculty that men can ever see things in their true colors. It is an instinct of the soul which grows in us in proportion to the employment we give it, and which helps us to perceive and understand the realities of things with far more certainty than can the simple use of our senses and the exercise of our reason. What are called good sense and logic enable us to see only the appearance of things, that which is evident to everyone. The instinct spoken here being a projection of our perceptive consciousness, a projection which acts from the subject to the object and not vice versa, awakens in us spiritual senses and power to act. These senses assimilate to themselves the essence of the object or of the action under examination and represent it to us as it really is, not as it appears to our physical senses and to our cold reason. We begin with instinct, we end with omniscience, the words of Madame Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. And with that, I'll say, the Lord bless you. The Lord enlighten your minds, comfort your hearts, and sustain your bodies. The Lord bring you to the accomplishment of pure will, the great work, the summum bonum, true wisdom, and perfect happiness.